Hello, in this video we're going to look at some properties of correlation that I think everybody knows, but not everybody has seen the proof of them. And the properties we're going to prove is that the correlation is between negative 1 and 1, and of course this is how you define correlation, it's a covariance divided by the product of the standard deviations. But we're also going to show that if the correlation is 1, or negative 1, then there's a perfect linear relationship between x and y. Now background, covariance is defined as the expected value of this cross product, which then you can write at like this. The variance, by definition, is this, and then this is the famous variance formula. So theorem 1 is let x and y be random variables with means mu x and mu y and variance sigma x squared and sigma y squared. Then the correlation is between minus 1 and 1. So to simplify things, we're going to create two variables, z1 and z2. And z1 is the z score of x, so it's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, you know, 4x, and then z2 is y minus its mean divided by its standard deviation. Then you can show that the mean or the expected value of z1 and z2 are equal to 0. The variances of z1 and z2 are 1. And if you look at the expected value of z1 squared or z2 squared, but here we're looking at z1, that's equal to the variance plus the mean squared. Now, I always have to think about it in terms of variance. That uh, Remember, the variance of a random variable is the mean, you know, the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. So if you take this piece to the other side, then you have a formula for x squared. And that's what we're doing here. So the variance plus the mean squared, but this is 0. And the variance is 1, so the expected value of z1 squared is 1. And we're going to use that property in the proof. That's why I stated it. Now here, if you look at this random variable, z1 minus z2 squared, it's always positive. And so its mean has to be positive. So the expected value of this is greater than or equal to 0. If we expand this uh, quadratic to this, and then distribute the expected value, we get this. But the expected value of z1 squared is 1. This is 1. So we get, so that's 2 minus this is all greater than or equal to 0. So if we divide everything by 2 and then add this to the other side, we get this relationship here. But remember, if we look at the expected value of z1 times z2, which is this, and we fill in what z1 and z2 are, we by definition are this. Now, the, the, the standard deviations of x and y are constant, so we could bring those out and be 1 over, or you, then you can, you know, or think of it as this divided by those, which is this piece here. So this is exactly this. But this is correlation. It's the, this is the covariance divided by the standard deviation. So the, co the correlation is less than or equal to 1. So that's one side of the proof. Now to, to prove that it's greater than or equal to minus 1, we look at this relationship. Z1 plus Z2 squared. Right? This is always positive. So its mean has to be positive. So this is greater than or equal to 0. Expand the quadratic, distribute the expected value, we get this. Well, this is 1 and 1, so that's 2. And we have 2 this. So divide both sides by 2. And then uh, subtract the 1 over, and we get this. But remember, it, this here is correlation. So it says the correlation is greater than or equal to minus 1. And so we've just showed that the correlation has to be less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to minus 1. And that's what we wanted to show when the proof is finished. 
Now, the second theorem, these are if and only if. So if the correlation is 1, it implies a perfect linear relationship between x and y. Now notice that these are population parameters are, and are constant. And so this is the equation of a line in terms of x and y. The if and only if says if there's a linear relationship between x and y, then the correlation is 1 and vice versa. And the same is true if the correlation is minus 1. Then the linear relationship is this. And, and actually, this is the slope parameter. So it's a negative slope, and this is a positive slope. So let's prove that. And to simplify things, we're going to use notation from theorem 1. We're not going to redefine it to save real estate on my paper here. So let's go uh, proof of 1, and we're going to go this direction, which means uh, assume this is true right here. Now, it implies, and, and actually now I think about it, I don't know if it implies, but this is exactly that. So I guess it does imply, but it also implies it the other way too. So this is exactly this, right? This is the definition of correlation. And then we also noted that if we, we can write it like this. So this can be written like this, and we showed that kind of on the previous page. But this is Z1 and Z2, so the expected value of Z1 and Z2 is equal to 1, right? And that's by because by definition we're assuming this is true. So now let's look at this formula, the variance of Z1 minus Z2. Now that is the expected value of this squared minus the mean of this quantity squared. But each of these expected value is 0, so 0 squared is 0, so that drops out. Then we can expand the quadratic and distribute the expected value. But this is 1, this is 1, right? And this is minus 2. And that's 0. So this variance is 0. So that implies with probability 1 that z1 and z2 are equal. But if z1 and z2 are equal, th that, that's this. This is z1 is equal to z2. Now you can multiply the standard deviation of y over and add the mean of y to get this. Well, that's exactly what we wanted to show, that x and y's have an exact linear relationship, actually with a positive slope. Now, to prove it the other way, remember we're still on part 1. And it was an if and only if. So now we assume this is true. But if you subtract the mean of y and divide by the standard deviation, then that is z1 is equal to z2. So now the correlation, and we showed on the previous two pages, that that's equivalent to the expected value of z1 times z2. But if z1 is equal to z2, we can put z1 here, and we get z1 squared. But the expected value z1 squared is 1. So that says the correlation has to be 1 if we assume this is true. And now part 1 is proved. Now for part 2, we're going to go this direction, which says we assume the correlation is minus 1. Then that implies that the expected value of z1 and z2 are equal to minus 1, right? Because this is equivalent to correlation. So let's look at the variance of z1 and z2, which is the expected value of z1, z2 squared, minus the mean quantity squared. This is 0, so it goes away. Expand the quadratic, distribute the expected value signs. This is 1. This piece is 1. And this is minus 2, right? Well, 1 plus 1 minus 2 is 0. So that implies, with probability 1, that z1 is equal to minus z2. So that is this. z1 is equal to minus z2. Now, if we multiply you know, the minus over, standard deviation up, add the mean, we get this. And that's what we wanted to show, that it's a perfect linear relationship between x and y with the negative slope. Now let's go back the other way. Let's assume there is an exact linear relationship between x and y 
with a negative slope. Now if we subtract y, divide by the standard deviation, that implies z1 is equal to minus z2 based upon this. Now the correlation, as we have seen before, is equal to the expected value of z1 times z2. But if, if, if z, z2 is, is minus z1, or vice versa, we can plug it in here, then the minus comes out front. We have the expected value of z1 squared, which is 1. So we get minus 1, and the correlation is minus 1. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. These, these properties, I think everyone knows, but n not everyone has seen the proof. So I hope you enjoyed it, because I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.